So the FNAF series is pretty infamous for its complexity. Of course, it wasn't always this way, but as the games progressed and questions spawned faster than they could be answered, things began getting real messy-like. Pair that up with some of the most basic gameplay nuns of popular indie gaming, and you got yourself a franchise uh, this close to a visual novel. I mean, the game part of these games is what's most often criticised, but I don't really see it that way. The majority of these entries are endurance tests, arcade-styled, keep-doing-the-thing-till-you-win type deals, and that's how I've always looked at these things. Honestly, what the simplistic mechanics to keep you attentive and on your toes to hide with the time limit to survive until reminds me of are uh, rhythm games, a genre of gaming I've always had a soft spot for, and um, putting them side by side, it's a lot easier to understand the kick people get out of these things, at least in my dumbass opinion. And for such a simple point and click and piss your pants adventure, you'd think there wouldn't be too much in the ways of scrapped ideas or content. Holy shit, is that the title of the video? Guess what we're talking about today, I've covered hoaxes, Hugses, leaks, time to take a gander at the real deals this time, the official stuff nobody was ever meant to see. Except a funny little word called decompiling exists, and boy howdy am I ever glad it does. Decompiling is a fancy word to describe the act of converting an executable back to its original project file in order to smash it to bits to see what makes it tick, among achieving other attainable goals through audio and image dumping, also known as file dumping. Decompiling and file dumping are two different park attractions. Decompiling, unpacking the game back to its editable, programmable states. File dumping, just extracting the audio and texture assets. File dumping's piss easy, at least for Click Team games, but thanks to updated encryption, the original project files, or .mfas in this case, for any game's sister location onwards have remained totally untouched territory until super recently, more on that in a bit, meaning we could still analyse each individual asset for those games, just to have no idea how the games specifically were put together. For instance, an image might appear in a texture dump for one game, but it's nowhere to be found during play, leaving it a mystery as to whether that image might have been programmed in as a super rare easter egg, or if it was just scrapped altogether. Enough on four though, we're decomposing as soon as the tools became available for people to do so, i.e. instantly in some cases. Yet yeah, decompiling and file dumping have some, uh, what I like to call moral debacles among the community. I'm not gonna get into it all too deep, though I do agree a level of respect should be kept for the developer when it comes to things like this. But come on, what do you want out of me? The great study of morality? I yell about Five Nights at Freddy's while recording myself in front of a red backdrop while I do this with my arms. That talks for another day. Today though we're getting wacky and boy, nothing's gonna cure my scopophobia more than discussing this game series again and oh boy, I'm really feeling episode talking about the garbage Scott Cawthon and didn't want talked about right about now, so uh, let's go do that. I mean, after all, I have been a part of this whole FNAF thing since before the release of the second game. Anyone's the right guy for the job, it's me. I want to take a look at everything from FNAF 1 to Help Wanted today. Not that there isn't anything beyond Help Wanted, trust me. But hey, Security Breach will be a thing in, uh, soon-ish, and I want to discuss any potential leftover garbo from that game, except I want to release this video, you know. Now, I'll talk about every game post VR in a sequel of sorts whenever Security Breach releases. Uh, Freddy in Space 2, Special Delivery, that weird ass help wanted mobile ports, any and all of that good stuff. However, before we get our fingers dirty, I want to make it clear I'm only going to be sticking to the games here. I understand that does exist unreleased merch and the likes, but I'd attribute that kind of thing under the label of lost media. Content or media that was once publicly released, revealed, rumoured, or straight up available, but was later changed or edited or revoked in some way. Scrap content, on the other hand, is stuff that was never meant to see the light of day. I think that's a good way to identify the two. It was never made functional for the final product and discovered or shown off post-release, it scrapped content. It was revealed or released at some point and later vigorously torn from the fabric of reality, it's lost media. I don't know, though, that's just a handy half definition I came up with, which I know some people would argue with. I don't know, lost media feels more like, hey, pretend this never happened, and scrapped content feels much more behind the scenes-y, uh, to me at least. Whatever, I'm focusing on the games in this video and calling it scrapped content, and I'll toss out a video on lost media at some point points that include the more merchandise promotional arty stuff. Like this terrifying Russian roulette themed FNAF board game that was ultimately canned. Guys, this toy based on a series infamous for child murder makes a reference to murder, get that shit out of here. Anyway, FNAF! Hey, guess what? I'm a liar. Man, I don't know, the first Five Nights at Freddy's game, I mean, you would think, you know, it's the first game, this is where the very groundwork was still being developed, there's gotta be a good amount of stuff here. Nope, but there is a demo that technically included content later scrapped from the final release. Not much here, though we do got a slightly different UI for the map on the monitor, a life system that would have probably killed any sort of replayability for anybody attempting the later nights. And yeah, that's about it. Even though you could point out the stuff and scream about how it's a part of the demo that's still publicly available. I mean, yeah, most of these games have leftover demo content, like special renders and all, but these were clearly things changed mid-development to the core experience. Oh, and remember that rare screen where all of the animatronics on the show stage would stay you down? <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't exist. I looked it up. People swear I haven't gotten this easter egg, but unless they're just misremembering the render being reused for the trailer, it's a total Mandela effect. It was proved and all, it's impossible to actually get in-game. Scrap stuff ain't always left over in the game's files though, left over on the Steam page for this game to this very day, Freddy is referred to as Freddy Bear, giving us a little context as to where the name Freddy originally came from. 
wordplay. And this Channel 9000 looking ass endoskeleton exists in the form of some pretty early promotional artwork, kinda sorta going on years until the second game. I'm already scraping the bottom of the barrel, but even the trailer might have suggested that at one point Bonnie was supposed to take his mask off in game. Yeah, I don't have enough physical matter to stretch this anymore. On to FNAF 2! Hey, welcome to Demoville, kid, and that was underwhelming. No beta junk this time, surprisingly enough, image assets for the live system remain in the game's files though, suggesting maybe FNAF 2 was built off of the first game's project file? Well, I don't know. Of course we got that infamous quote unquote toxic meter, originally intended to limit the amount of time you'd be able to spend with the mask down, but boy would that be a tad insane hinder on an already stretching it difficulty balancing system. Also this implies the mask itself is somehow selectively toxic depending on how long you had it on for. I'm assuming you'd only have to flip it up for a second to give yourself some air to reset the meter or something, so that'd be like dealing with this painful bullshit dealing with this painful bullshit. Here's a weird sort of half skull sprite thing known as Mike in the game files that we've had absolutely no word of closure on to this day. What do you mean people freaks the bitch out over this? There's an isolated render of Toy Chica here too, with code left over in the .mfa that would have had her act almost identical to Toy Bonnie when he scuttles back and forth in the office while your mask's up. The obvious difference here being that she would have arrived from the left side, but she also would have stuck around for around 10 seconds apparently. Aside from the obvious difficulty balancing issue this had caused, people who have modded the code back into the game would experience the game crashing. And assuming this wasn't due to the fact that it is modded code, it's likely the reason the feature was left out of the game entirely, instead of Scott, you know, fixing it. And this silly little rapscallion, who is technically in the final game, just a hidden object in the office for the entire time. This is the only time you ever see the puppet on strings, and judging from the fact that his jump scare comes from the center of the screen, cast in shadow to mimic springing out that long funky hallway, I doubt this would have been any kind of potential attack pose like the rest of the animatronics seem to have in the office, but I'm genuinely curious as to what would have entailed had this render been kept in for the final product. And guess who shows up in the next game's files? FNAF 3! For no reason. Yeah, there's a leftover puppet render in the third game's files, as well as assets for the live system. Still, that mechanic in this game to seal the vents by double clicking a camera was originally its own button apparently, and there was going to be a seventh night oh. at some point. Is... is that it? FNAF 4! FNAF World! Oh. Yeah, it turns out a full-on RPG has more going on than an hour-long point-and-click, who would've thunk it? Let's kick it off with the stuff everybody already knows about. <laughs> Firstly, a render of the box from FNAF 4, but now with all new basic functionality. Yeah, this clearly doesn't fit anywhere in the game itself, and knowing Scott, there's a good chance he threw it in the game's files knowing people would decompile it looking for secrets. While this was never confirmed, however, the whole idea that the box contains all the pieces of the story put together probably bears some little significance. That we will never unveil, because that is the Scott Cawthon experience trademark. An entire song was left over also. I I mean, this is the first game in the series to receive any original music, let alone a full soundtrack's worth, so scrapped music gets to be expected. It's a fairly decent theme though, I can't imagine any reason it was cut other than due to Scott just not having anywhere to put it. There's also a cut line from JJ, a character in the Foxy Fighters minigame, who says ASS! Going to kick your ass! ASS! There's an unused attack animation for Brow Boy, meaning that at one point he would have been an enemy instead of a boss, a star icon that would have appeared from beating normal and hard and the Chipper's Revenge boss fight, this little bastard turtle from one of Scott's older games, Slumberfish, that would have appeared in the fishing minigame. But a lot of this stuff is just sorta interesting to me, an unused haunting chip with no coding that would have summoned Ghost Freddy to freeze an enemy, an unused toxic song attack with no coding, unused poison statuses for enemies, these bitches that pissed me off a disproportionate amount for how uninvested an FNAF world I am. Honestly though, that's mainly it for anything worth crying over. There is a strange happiest day asset loaded out of frame in the drowned ending, which could be argued over whether or not that has any significance, but look. Sister location! Hey, not as much here, but hey, quality over quantity. Everything here is equally weird as shit. And hey, just three days prior to writing this script, some dude, Kostya, pulled together an entire updated decompiler to tackle all the game's post FNAF world, which is super neat and finally gives us context behind a lot of this behind the scenes garbage. Like this render of Circus Baby that we only just learned was meant to sit behind the text on the game over screen, which gives it a lot more depth and looks pretty damn cool. Why? And this incredibly strange blue screen that springs up after waiting below our gallery for a minute and 20 seconds, with four arbitrary voice lines from Circus Baby spelling out a string of four numbers in the background. Weirdly enough, this isn't some default click team debug mode or anything, this was something intentionally programmed into the game. But hey, imagine being given context for the significance of anything in this game franchise. We also now know that some of what we thought to be totally unused or scrapped assets, like the various animatronic blueprints or bitty bab easter eggs, 
were programmed in, but like the absolute maniac he is, Scott decided to give each one a 1 out of 10,000 chance of ever occurring. There's a genuinely pretty cool set of renders for Ballora to peep it right up against the glass here, and a cut voice line that I'm assuming would have gone along with them. Also in the primary control module, the vents used to have these strange metal bar coverings, which I don't know if they would have replaced the straight up metal doors we got or whatever, but hey, they sure did exist. Here's an unused map layout for the facility you're stuck in, and ah, here's the best image you've ever seen. This total nightmare obviously wasn't technically, you know, scraps, just unused as a placeholder for Michael Afton and Cecil Location's true ending. Also, hey, Funtime Foxy has pink eyelids for exactly one shot in the Cecil Location trailer, and never again, it counts. Alrighty, time to delve into Pizzeria Simulator. Hey, oh, we got some unused cassette tape animations, I'm guessing for debugging or testing purposes. This unused blueprint for Molten Freddy, hypothesis to have originally been used for the insanity ending. You see it! Title that went unused, bonus animation frames from sister location, a couple of cut characters. Yeah, this video's pacing feels about as consistent as this jar of ball and a sauce. Hey, you want some of this, bruv? Yeah, there ain't much in terms of scrapped content if we're talking the OG Click Team games. I mean, there's stuff, but. Come on. There's only so much leftover, unused, or cut content one man can manage, is what I'm saying. Yeah, we need the whole team. Yeah, that's right. Metal sheep. What? Steel wool. The guys that looked at this and said, yeah, cram another one of these in there. Co-credited for funking up the FNAF timeline even further, these dudes are currently who are handling the mainline FNAF games, with Scott Cawthon acting as executive producer. So far, they've only released their own Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted and are currently working on the upcoming security breach, the former of which was critically acclaimed, and a lot of people say this is their favorite FNAF game and... Yeah, it's for good reason. We're only focusing on Help Wanted today though for scrapped content, as security reaches in a point of development I like to call still in development. So finally, I... HELP WANTED! Hey, here's some information useless to anybody who knows anything about this game ever. At some point in development, a Showtime feature would have been available. By hitting the button on the desk in the hub area, the Fazbear Gang would have just straight up performed. This is actually kind of cool, as for the first time, aside from a single shot from the first game's trailer five years prior to this game's release, people finally got a glimpse into what these mofos performing in the day actually looks like. You know, that thing they do, you know, their sole purpose. Took them half a decade to show it off. And Showtime is fully coded in, just inaccessible by usual means. Speaking of the first game, Help Wanted's hard mode for their FNAF 1 VR recreation originally would have included black light variations of the animatronic size metal product tie-in. Oh, Funko, you cheeky rascals. Steel Wool was not always peaches and gravy with the FNAF community, however, with the reveal teaser for Help Wanted instantly putting them in a bit of a bad light caught using a Google Images reference for the Spring Bonnie arts. Funko, you cheeky rascals. Yeah, Spring Bonnie. At least late enough in development to be included in an exclusive early demo. Or originally, we would have had him instead of Melher. Whether or not this change was brought about simply because of that teaser later being updated to reflect a design more accurate to Springtrap before being replaced entirely by Nightmarian is unknown, but there are leftover remnants of what could have been. For example, presumably beta textures for Spring Bonnie with the normal and roughness maps to accompany. That people even attempted to reverse engineer models of what he could have looked like out of. There's also an untapped textured model of Springtrap named Glitchtrap with barely any differences to the original besides a small stitch like indent on the upper left side of his torso. Possibly a remnant of the transitional period between these guys using Mao hair instead of Spring Bonnie. Man, some hefty features were cut from this thing, like an entire unused multiplayer mode for the game, including a game mode known as Flashlight Freeze, though not much in the way of details were left in the files. There's a lot of just random garbage here too. Placeholder ATMs, an unused batch of prize tickets, an unused model for a processed poultry poxy fried chicken box with chica on it. <gasps> friend, known as Toy Proxy or Big Toy in the Files. I imagine this dude was another placeholder for Plus Trap, judging by its matching animations for his section, and for Nightmare Fredbear and Funtime Freddy in the Night Terror section, sharing animations with them as well. He's squishy. Man, what else? There's an unused animation of a Freddle going under the bed, obviously similar to FNAF 4, possibly, probably, definitely originally planned for Night Terrors. According to a leftover dev note, the mangle level of the vent repair minigame was originally intended to have another vent above you, but that never happens, I guess. Scott's original unoptimized models for Withered, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy are here too. Sure, that's kinda neat. Oh, technically even those distorted real life animatronic photos that have been thrown up on Scott's website are scrapped content. Originally intended to just appear to be cool random images of animatronic parts, they were technically scrapped due to people linking them back to Showbiz Pizza, as they were, in fact, endoskeletons used in those restaurants. And finally, hey, that Curse of Dreadbear DLC was a thing and included some scrapped stuff. 
namely some unused burnt freddles that would have been used in the build a mangle minigame, an unused howling animation for Grim Foxy, and a graphic for an alpha build of the DLC, originally called Rise of Frank and Freddy. And yeah, how that's neat, except holy shit, apparently a patch was released for this thing at some point that was straight up the very alpha build this came from. Shout out to NR Superstar, what a friggin' find, <laughs> god damn. So hey, bit of a shorter thing, but I figured I'd go over some of the more interesting scrapped garbage dug up out of the guts of the franchise over the years, and there is some cool stuff here. It's crazy how infamous some of this cut content became too, the earlier games especially, spawning all kinds of wacky from people speculating over what the skull sprite mic thing really was, or what a render of the puppet was in in FNAF 3. Sure, this shit absolutely pales in comparison to what people are cooking up on their own, but I think the real lesson we learned today is that it's okay to laugh at what the dev considered worthless. Except for this little creature, they are my child and I'm guarding them with my life.